Today we'll learn how we can turn a day shot like this to a night shot but with proper light interaction. Just a heads up, this is my first full length tutorial and I'm already questioning my life choices because I have to listen to my own voice again and again to edit this. And if I can survive this, you can too. So let's get into it. So I'm gonna use this stock footage for our tutorial. Drag and drop this footage to a new composition. So the first thing that we need to do is track our video. But as you can see, there's a moving character in our video, which can mess up with our track. So first, let's roto out our character, which we can do it in two ways. For the first method, I'm gonna use After Effects inbuilt Roto Brush tool. So duplicate your layer and rename the bottom one as background. Now select the Roto Brush tool and double click on the first layer. Now use the roto brush to select the whole character. For the hair detail, right click on the roto brush icon and select refine as tool and paint around the hair. Now hit play and mostly the roto brush is gonna do a good enough job. But you still have to keep checking. Roto brush still struggles in some areas like narrow corners or holes or in between fingers. Once you're done, click on the freeze button and wait till the whole process is finished. It might take some time. And the roto is done. I mean, it's, it's alright, right, but it's not perfect. As you can still see some issues near the edges. So here comes the second method. But before that, don't forget to save your project file. Now open your browser and search people AI and open the first link. Now click on try people. Then video to VFX. And now you can drag and drop your footage here. Once it's uploaded, Click on review VFX passes and then it will process the first frame and generate different passes for that. If you think your subject was not correctly selected in the alpha mat, then there's an option to refine alpha and even change frame from which you want to select your subject. Once you're satisfied, click on generate all frames. This process will take a few minutes, but it will generate a lot of useful passes. In this video, we're just gonna use the alpha pass and one more very useful relighting feature which we are going to use later in this tutorial now the processing is done and we can click on download i'm going to download the alpha pass in png format for better quality now let's go back to after effects go to the file location of the png sequence we just downloaded and unzip the file now import that png sequence in your project file and don't forget to check the PNG sequence button. Now make sure the frame rate of the PNG sequence is the same as the frame rate of your composition and your main footage. If it's not the same, then you can right click, go to interpret footage, main, and change your frame rate from there. Now drag and drop your PNG sequence to the composition. Duplicate the background layer and rename it as Proto. Now drag the pick whip tool to the alpha pass and click on the checkbox once to make it a luma mat. And here we have a better looking roto of our character with even hair details. Now duplicate the alpha mat. Select these two layers and make a pre-comp. Let's hide this old roto layer by clicking on the shy button as we don't need it anymore. Duplicate the background layer and pre-comp it with the other alpha mat layer and rename it as camera. Now go inside the pre-comp layer and link the track mat of the background layer to the alpha mat. Switch it to the luma mat and click on the invert mat button. And now we don't have any moving objects that can mess up with our track. Now let's go back to our main comp. And let's add a 3D camera tracker to the camera layer. And turn on detail analysis. And we have our track with an average error of 0.45 pixels. Which is good enough until it's under 1 pixel. Now select a few track points from the ground and click on create solid and camera. I'm gonna hide these layers for now and add a curves effect on the background layer. Now reduce the highlights and adjust the curve until you get something like this. Now press Ctrl Y to add a new solid and name it color control. Make it a guide layer and even hide it. We're gonna just use this layer to control the color scheme of our whole scene. Now add a tint effect and go to edit copy with property links and then paste it to the background layer. Now since we did copy with the property links 
If we make any changes to the tint effect of the color control layer, we will see the same changes happening on the background layer. Now replace the white to a bluish color to make it look more like a night scene. And yeah, this is our final result. So we can call it a day. Or we can make it a bit more interesting. So I'm gonna go back to the camera p comp and unlink the track mat. Now I want to separate the foreground. So for that, instead of using the roto brush, I'm gonna select the camera tracker effect and then select the track points around the foreground and then click on create solid. Now adjust the solid till it covers the whole foreground. Now I made the opacity zero so that I can see behind the solid. Now select the pen tool and make a mask around your foreground. If you're wondering why am I doing it on a 3D solid layer, it's so that we can mask out our foreground with just a few keyframes. Press M and add a keyframe on the mask path. Go further in your timeline and adjust the mask. And we have a mask of our foreground with just two keyframes. Now duplicate the background layer and rename it. Also rename the 3D solid layer. Press F4 to toggle and see the track mat option and then link the track mat to the solid layer. Don't forget to turn back the opacity to 100%. And we have a mask of our foreground. You can press F and add a little bit of feather. Being honest, the edges of the mask don't look that good or organic right now. But I do have a lazy fix for it, which I will show you later. But for now, let's add some stars. Click Ctrl Y to add a new solid and rename it as stars and then add CC starburst effect to it. Now add a fill effect and change the color to white. Now you can tweak the starburst settings according to your liking. But here are the settings that I used. Now add camera lens blur and change the blur amount to something around one pixel. And wait, the stars are moving. That's because I forgot to turn the speed to zero. So do that and make the layer 3D. Now hit P and increase the Z position way ahead while pressing shift so it's faster. Now increase the size and adjust the position and rotation so that it covers the whole frame. Now select the pen tool and add a mask so that the stars are only visible at the top part. Now add a similar mask at the top of the background layer and change the mode to subtract. Increase the feather a lot and adjust the mask so that you get a good gradient on the sky. Now I want to add some glow coming from the bottom of the cliff. So add a new solid and rename it as glow. Add fill effect and change the color to your liking. Select the pen tool and add a mask in a way that it looks like a glow coming from the bottom. We can do the same on a 3D track solid layer, but I'm too lazy for that. So here comes the fun part. Like what if you were able to make the light interact with our subject and the foreground. So for that, we need to go back to Beeble. Close this window and click on open a new project. Now wait for it to load the project. Here you won't see anything at first because there is no light in the scene. So out of these four options, I'm gonna add a point light. And boom, we have a light interacting with our subject in real time. But wait, there's more. Click on the view in 3D button. And this allows you to move the light in 3D space. So you can get the realistic edge light on your subject. You can even add keyframes for the properties like position, color and intensity. But for this tutorial, we won't need that. So I'm just gonna position the light and change the light color. In the advanced tab, you also have a few more options to tweak the lighting. And once you're done, click on export. Here you will see a few export options. Beeble even has a plugin for Blender and Unreal Engine where you can export the footage from here and directly import into either of the 3D software and it will be totally relatable. Maybe I will make a tutorial on that later. But for now, I will click on foreground with transparency and hit start render. Create a new folder for this and wait for the render to complete. It will take just a few seconds. Now go back to After Effects and import this PNG sequence. And remember to check the PNG sequence checkbox. And the frame rate should be the same as that of the composition and the footage. Now drag and drop it to the composition. Press F4 to see the blend mode options and turn it to screen. And we have our realistic edge light. 
This is before and after. Before, after. Before, after. Before. Okay, that's it. So now we got to do something about the foreground. Before, after. Sorry, Sorry can't, can't help. help. Yeah, so remember the edges of the foreground looking like sh**. So we're going to fix that now and add some light interaction to it. For this, I will use this moving grass stock element because our scene is pretty windy. But you can use the same method with the still PNG. Drag and drop the grass element below the foreground layer, which I named midground. For some reason, don't be this guy. Always name your layers properly. Now roughly place it behind the cliff and copy and paste the curve and tint effect from the foreground layer. Now make the grass layer 3D and go to the camera layer and select the 3D camera tracker. Select a point from the edge and create a null from it. Press P to reveal the position property and copy it. Now go back to your grass layer and paste the position property. Tweak the size and position and we have better looking edge details. But before duplicating it to the other positions, let's set camera lens blur to match the sharpness of the footage. Hide the effect for now and add CC light sweep. Now change the direction, increase the width and make the sweep intensity 0. Now increase the edge intensity. For the light color, click on the add keyframe button while holding alt. Select the color control layer. Go back to the light color expression. Use pick whip tool to link the light color to the second color of the tint effect. Now if we change the color in the color control layer, it will automatically change the highlights of the grass layer. I'm gonna do the same with the color of the glow layer. Alt click on the color and link the expression color to the second color of the tint effect. Now go back to the color control layer, select the foreground tint effect, then go to edit copy with property links and then paste it to the relate PNG sequence, which I renamed earlier as the light. It decreased the light intensity a bit, but we will duplicate it later to increase the intensity. So now if we change the color of the foreground tint, it will change the color of all the elements altogether. Now I will make some copies of the grass element and populate it throughout the edge of the cliff. I gradually decrease the edge intensity of the elements at the corner to make it blend with our scene smoothly. Now I go back to the glue layer, add a keyframe on the mask path at the first frame. Then go further in your timeline and adjust the mask according to the camera movement. And we are almost there. We just need to show something where the glow is coming from. Either it's an explosion or a beam of light. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna use this particles asset, which looks like embers or fireflies coming from bottom. I will upload and leave this asset in the description. You can download it and use it in your own projects. Now I drag and drop it to a composition and make it 3D. Again, copy the position of the track null and paste it to the particles layer. Move it behind and adjust the position and scale so it covers the frame completely. You can again go back to the color control and copy the foreground tint effect with property links and paste it to the particles layer. Now for the final touch, I'm gonna add an adjustment layer. Add deep glow effect on it to add some light diffusion. Add another adjustment layer using Ctrl Alt Y and add add grains effect to it. I'm gonna change the intensity and size and change the viewing mode to final output. This blends together all the elements and brings some realism to the scene. Now hit render and your VFX shot is done. I hope we learned something new today. And a big thanks to Bebal AI for sponsoring this video. Don't tell them, but I would have made the same exact video even if they had not sponsored it. So let's just keep it between us. And if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. I will try to answer all of them unless you ask something weird. And I'm also planning to make more such videos, so do subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram where I post stuff. So yeah, until next time.